Hi everybody. Wow, 2025 is quickly approaching and we are about to meet an all new level of this ascension process. So let's talk about what that looks like and what that means for us and the collective and a message that the guides want to tie in for us to help us through this process. So let's go ahead and jump in. Do you feel, feel, do you feel the light? Do you feel the light? light? Do you feel the light coming? Do you feel the light? Do you feel the light? light? Do you feel the light coming? So you've heard me talk about in my previous video how it feels like there is potential in January for us to start this process off with a bang. And it's going to start hitting hot and heavy once we get into next year. We're kind of in this preparation phase for it where we're really amping up our power and releasing anything that is weighing us down so that we can really step up into this next level and rise as these leaders of new earth and leading through this ascension process so that we can hold the line and hold this energy for people to step into. So the guides have been chirping in my ear a lot about uh, 2025. They've been doing it for the past couple of years and here we are quickly approaching it. So really what's going to start happening is this big word that I was given by the guides, which is crumbling. We are about to watch so many aspects of our current third dimensional society begin to crumble. And that is a lot of the purpose of what we're stepping into starting this next year. We need to collapse what no longer works. And unfortunately, that's a heck of a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff in order to get to this fifth dimensional consciousness and really anchor it in. So the reason why this crumbling is so important, and this is what my guides have been talking about. I'm even offering a meditation to help us get a kickstart on this before we enter into 2025. So if you want to, you can join this Thursday, November 21st for this meditation. I feel like it is so important right now. The guides are saying the purpose of this crumbling is for us to release our attachments to things. So much of what currently exists in the world, the systems, the industries, the guidelines, the laws, whatever, is built on a lower consciousness. And we need to like burn it to the ground so that we can build it from a new place. And so many people are attached to these things, to these causes, to these policies, to, you know, certain people, um, industries, you know, ways of being and living. They're so attached to it, to the point where it like controls their life, to the point where they're constantly feeding these things, the illusion of these things through their own emotion and their own trauma. So as these systems and policies and industries and all these things start to collapse, our own world will start to collapse too. So it's going to happen on an individual level. It's going to force people to look at a new way of being. It's going to force people to look at their SHIT <laughs> and finally realize what they have been putting all of their uh, you know eggs in a basket towards. It's like, I'm banking on this all the time, whether that's a job or that's a, a belief system. It's like we put so much into it and we attach to it thinking this is the thing that's going to save me. This is the thing that's going to create my life for me. This is the thing that's going to keep me in avoidance of looking at my own stuff. And as it starts to collapse, people are going to probably lose their mind. Now I don't know what else to attach to. Well, there is nothing to attach to. Instead, we're all going to have to learn to connect instead and connect to ourselves, connect to this higher level. So this collapsing is the breaking down of attachments because what attachments actually are is a trauma and we don't want to look at it. We want something external outside of us to fix this negative feeling, 
this trauma that's sitting inside of us. We want this other thing to just magically save us. We think that the external is this Prince Charming coming in to magically make everything good. And we know, especially with like over the many, many years on this planet with elections and things like that, it's all like nothing is ever finite. Nothing ever can fully save you. Maybe for like a few years, something happens and you think that a certain person getting into a certain position will be the thing that saves you. And then it's like a few years later, it completely flips again. So it's like, it's we're attached to these outcomes, to certain issues, policies, systems, like I said. And these attachments keep us from being our full self, keep us from being in our power. There's a particular attachment going on right now in the collective, especially in the U.S., to a particular issue, and it's on both sides of the fence. And you can know when it's an attachment and there's an illusion around something because it is fueled by people's resentment. It is fueled by hate. It is fueled by them thinking that they are the know-it-all and they, that this is their truth and they're holding on to it so tightly. And when it doesn't work out the way that they want, then they are throwing so much hate into the collective. This is because people are attached to something. And you know that that attachment is like, it's created even by the, the darker archons, the elites that run the, the world right now. They want to create like these hot button issues that people can attach to. And they create this illusion around it that it's making you feel powerful and safe or free. And then it's this hot button issue that is so vicious on both sides of the fence that it creates so much division, so much separation, so much hate. And people just attach to that. And they don't realize that they're using this issue or this cause to just constantly throw their trauma into. And that it's actually coming from a trauma place and not a place of truth. So as these things start breaking down, people are going to have to face their quote unquote demons, their illusions, their attachments that they have been looking to the external for to save them. They have been using the external to try and create the reality for them. And when you give that power away, plenty of things in the external are going to come in and say, oh, you mean you're going to let me create your reality for you? Oh, thank you so much. And that's what the dark has done over and over and over again. It's gotten us to attach to the external. And in 2025, the external world as we know it is going to begin crumbling and people are going to lose their minds. But this is a good thing. It's a good thing. And we have been trained for this. We have gone through so much over the past many, many years of feeling chaotic, of feeling displaced, of feeling, you know, lonely, whatever it may be, frustrated, angry, so that we could come back to ourselves and find that within ourselves and not attach to anything else. Instead, we connect. We're looking for connection, not attachment. And if you think about these hot button issues, these systems, and how much they create division and separation, there is no connection there. It's here to separate. So when we connect in with ourself and the higher realms, the higher consciousness, connection gets created. Separation from these attachments starts to happen. And we start to see things from more of a bird's eye view. And this is what we're aiming towards. So it feels like a lot of these things in our society are going to start rapidly collapsing. They're going to be collapsed on purpose, maybe not on purpose. And it's going to cause a lot of trauma to come up to the surface and people won't know how to handle it. We've been through this. We know what it's like. We've been through it so that we can understand what they're going through and not feel like we have to attach to it and fix things or give away our energy to it. 
it's going to become increasingly difficult to create <laughs> connection to ourselves and separation from the external. So we have to start mastering it now. We have to learn about what we're actually attaching to. So join me on Thursday the 21st to do that. <laughs> so I want to use an example from my life. For several years now, I haven't had a permanent home. I've moved a lot in the last probably four-ish years. And it's been very frustrating. My stuff has been in storage for a long time. I just want my things back. I've gotten rid of the majority of my things. And I've been living in what feels slightly unsettled. Even the place I'm in now, it's not a permanent home. I'm just here for a little bit. And I'm coming to this place where it's like, home is here. It's in me. And the more I find that permanence in me and stop attaching to the external of I need this type of home, I need this in order to feel safe, in order to feel okay, the universe has been breaking me down from my attachments. And this attachment of thinking, if I don't have a permanent home right now, that means I'm not as successful, that means my life isn't going right. All the stuff that I attach to, these beliefs inside my mind. It's also been doing it with health. I've been battling uh, Lyme disease for a while and it just won't get better. So it's been quite a journey. I found it late stage. So my health has been really a hot button issue for me. I can't always show up the way that I want to because it takes a toll on me a lot of the days. And in addition to having the Lyme, I also found I have mold. So I'm coming into acceptance of this is just what's happening. And the more that I can let go and release and let go and release and surrender to this chaos that's happening in my own life, the more I find that connection into myself. And this is what's going to be happening on a grander scale and an individual scale for people in the collective. Now we have been through this. I've been dealing with it with the moving and my health and other things. But I'm becoming a master of it now. I'm like, all right, this is just what it is. I know that the more I own this and the more I accept it, and the more I just connect to myself in the midst of this, the quicker it's going to pass. And I don't do that just so I can get out of it, but I do that because that's what's being called for and asked of me right now. This is the power we're stepping into. If we're dealing with a narcissist, if we're dealing with people who we're afraid of what they're going to think or say, if we offer our gifts to the world, we're attaching to what other people are going to think of us. Where does that come from? It might be something in childhood. Let's go deeper with that attachment and release it. This is what we're doing on the 21st. So we have to have these societal structures dismantle themselves as well because we attach on a collective level and we attach on an individual level and on an individual level we also attach to the things that are on this collective level on a grander scale because we make them mean something to us individually about who we are or our worth our value and we're finding all of that within ourselves right now I had this download drop in of like, you're not going to find a permanent home until you find that feeling of permanence within yourself. <laughs> we all got things to work on, you know? We are heading into the breaking down of our attachments so that we can come back to our connection. And I want to talk about what that looks like. So in order to do that, I have to draw. It's just a no-brainer at this point. <laughs> okay, we're actually going to go long ways today. So in addition to this crumbling energy, events starting to take place, things getting dismantled, this is the absolute, this is necessary. This is what needs to happen. We are not here to have this like comfy, cozy, we just dance into the daisy field and everything's okay. That's not how it was. 
for your awakening. I know it because that's how it was for me. So the guides have been talking to me a lot about the soul and the body and what they really mean, what that actually looks like and how they work together. So we are not a body with a soul. We are a soul that has not just taken on a body. It has created a body to inhabit and have a physical experience. So this is what we are, okay? Or that dot. That dot is our soul. This is us. It's the energy. And what is the energy of this? It is I ideas. It's pure idea and creation, possibility, wonder, without limitation. This is what we are. We are creator beings. Our souls, this energy, get to create every single freaking physical thing that you see. And you might be like, well, how did it create the sweater you're wearing? <laughs> I'll tell you how. You're looking at this sweater. It's a dark green. And I've been told that this, this color that I'm wearing is dark green and that the type of shirt I'm wearing is a sweater. And I've said, yes, okay, that's true. I've taken that on as my belief. So now that I know that and I'm aware of it, I know that I can create more of this type of stuff. Unconsciously, I do it. I'm looking at this stone. Oh, it's glowy, it's white, it's round, it's an oval shape. And this is a hard surface. It's a stone. So my mind takes on that idea that's been presented to me and it says yes to it. So now I can create more of it. So we have our own pure ideas that come through for us. And this is what we are. We are pure energy and idea without limitation. So how do we become this. I'll show you. I'll draw it for you. <laughs> okay. So here's this. This is source. All right. This whole thing is source. The energy that we consider God, the universe, even beyond that, all of existence. And here we are. This is us again, right in source. And maybe there's other things in here, other fractals of other that become other people, right? But this one is you. And you go, oh, I want to have an experience, an independent individual experience outside of source. And source has this idea itself. It's its own pure thought without limit. And it says, okay, what if I kind of break off and go have my own journey? What if I become the black sheep of the family? All right, so it's kind of like, let me, it's like, oh, that piece just like breaks off. It's like, and it just like falls down into existence on its own. So then source is like this. It's got all the other things here. And it's, and you've split off. It doesn't necessarily become smaller. It's just what I drew, but, and here you are. So you're here, this is you, the diagram is fanning down. You're just this pure energy and idea. Now you can exist in that space and just be an energy out in the universe. Or you might say, well, I want to know what it's like to create things physically. I want to know what it's like to be in a physical body and still be this idea, still be this energy of creation. And you go, wow, that would be so cool. So it's like you take a deep breath in and push your energy out. Um, almost like a, like a balloon or something, blowing it up. You go, this is what you do. You go, oh, cool. And you kind of push your energy out. It's like, oh, I'm going to push my energy out. Okay, that sounds cool. I'll just push my energy out. And look what it starts to form. I'm going to push it out. And here you are in a physical body. It's your energy from your soul just being pushed all the way out. 
And now this becomes like an antenna to tell you when you're not in the energy of your soul and when you are. So when you have physical ailments or illnesses, it's letting you know we are not fully in the energy of pure creative thought and idea. I'm limiting myself. I'm outside of the realm of possibility. My energy is stuck, quote unquote. There's something in here that I need to release. We don't create by pulling in the external. This is what so many people think. See, we have this existence of pure thought of our energy and then we push it out and it creates a body and then it might create a home, you know? <clears throat> and you could go live in it. It might create a partner. Oh, I want this. Cool. It might create some little partners. Maybe a kitty cat. It's way bigger than the other people. <laughs> it's so, all of these things, you get to think it and say, I would like this. I want to experience it. It's all experience. And we push it out from within us. That's why when you manifest something, you visualize it, you think about it. And then it's like you hand it off to the universe to kind of like go create itself for you. Now, so many people, hold on. What so many people do is, here we are again. We have the physical body. I'm so bad at drawing. <laughs> Thank you guys for being with me. Okay. Um, <laughs> really dimensionally correct here. Okay. Uh, what so many people do is, here they are with their body. And instead of pushing their energy out, what they're doing is, here's stuff, you know, in the external. And they're trying to like pull it in. It's like they have this little rope and they're trying to lasso it and just pull it in, pull it all in to them. Give me, give me this, give me, give me. And we attach to it. And then when this doesn't pull in, we get all angry or sad and upset at the world. And then we try to tell, you know, someone over here, well, it's your fault. You did this because I wasn't able to get this. You're not here to get anything. <laughs> the only thing you're here to get is the idea that you are idea, pure creative thought. And the body is here to tell you when you're outside of that. So the guides are saying, as we realize that we are just this ball, we are soul, we are energy. And the more we can realize we create from that space and we stop attaching to the external, our whole world starts to shift. So when we see all of this chaos and this anger and resentment and this crumbling starting to happen in 2025, we need to come back to this remembrance that we are a piece of source fractaled off, that we create everything ourselves, pushing out from ourselves, ourselves and ourselves. And when our body is telling us something through pains, through illness, through nervousness, through anxiety, fear, it's an opportunity for us to sit with it and talk to it and understand why it's showing up in the first place. And when we have that understanding, we can start to bring in this pure creative thought of how, oh, well, I can create something different here from within me. They're telling me that when we learn to do this and start pushing out that energy from within us, trusting, knowing how powerful we are, that things will just 
get created because we are believing it. That even our body will start to shift. Like gray hair goes away. Weight falls off. The more that we honor ourselves, the more that we honor the pure creative thought that our soul is and act on it and follow it through and sit with the parts that are showing up that aren't this pure creative thought, the more we just magically make things happen, the more we release these attachments, the more we release these depletions that are happening to our body and we replenish ourselves. I've talked about this before too in earlier videos about how the dark wants our resources so they've gotten us to attach to the external so that we create for them instead of for us. We have a powerful resource inside of us, our pure creative thought. It will change the world. Our world. Your world. So the guides are saying they want us to practice something, to start to believe that we can shift our bodies, that we can shift our whole reality, our entire planet, through just tuning in with our pure creative thought and pushing that energy out. They want us to manifest small things, a cup of coffee, a compliment. Whatever it is to you, a hug, without having to verbally ask for it. We're sending out telepathic signals from our own energy and our own trust and faith, and we'll see when they show up. Um, I just, I mentioned that I moved back in September and I had to get like new plates and stuff for my car. And I needed a screwdriver to change the plates. I was like, oh man, it's in storage. I don't want to have to go there. So we were raking leaves in our yard, my husband and I, and all of a sudden in like this bunch of leaves that was there, we find a screwdriver. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is exactly what I needed to change the plates. And it's like, I didn't have to do anything. I just put out this thought of, well, I don't want to have to go to the storage. Maybe one will just show up. And it did. And this is the magical, it's just a little thing, just a little thing. And instead of rushing to my storage unit to go grab it and rummage through stuff and try to find it, I just said, you know what, let's see if one shows up. And it did in the most unexpected way. <laughs> so this, these are the tiny manifestations the guides want us to start doing. When something comes up and you're like, I don't know what to do about this. Or I need this thing, but uh, it's going to be so much work to do it this way. So uh, I don't know. Let me just try to manifest something else. A shirt. <laughs> A dark green sweater. <laughs> manifest something small and, and then build upon it. And just imagine as you go into this pure creative thought of what you want. Don't think about the how, how it's going to happen. That's for the universe to figure out. And just push it out from your body and then move about your day. And when you do that and you step into faith, you raise your vibration, you jump timelines, you do all of this stuff. So start small and then build. And the more you do that, the more you're going to believe that your pure creative thought can shift your reality, can shift your external. And I mean, this is pure. This isn't like, I wanna get this person to think the way I think. It's pure creative thought. It's just about you. That's it. And the pureness of your heart and what it really wants. It's always going to be something unexpected. And the way it shows up is going to be unexpected. That's the best part. So as we learn to do this, we're stepping more into our power. And we don't attach to the external world that is crumbling. As these systems and these industries start to crumble and you may still have attachments to them, it will be easier to let go of because you're putting in this practice of creating your reality from your pure creative thought, from your soul, from your heart, from your own essence. So these things go hand in hand. So as we step into 2025, 
We're stepping into our strength. We are letting things fall. We are letting things be the way they need to be that we don't have control over. And we're going to learn to start stepping into our truth of our pure creative thought. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. Please like and share if you've enjoyed this video. And if you would like to join me this Thursday, November 21st to help release attachments and get a head start, please do. The link is below to sign up. Thank you again, and I will see you soon. I love you guys. Do you feel, feel, do you feel the light? Do you feel the light? light, light, light. Do you feel the light you feel me? Do you feel the light? Do you feel the light? light, light. Do you feel the light you feel me?